Good evening, everyone. Speaking on behalf of MTAR Technologies Limited, I'm Lalit Jai Singh from Concept PR and your moderator for this virtual brokers and analyst event. I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for taking out your time from your busy schedules to join us. We appreciate your presence and extend a very warm welcome to all of you. The objective of today's live session is to understand MTAR Technologies' interest in raising finance via an initial public offering and what they do as a business organization. Under normal circumstance, this would have been an on-ground event, but we are all increasingly getting accustomed to this as a safer and more convenient format of attending and conducting the roadshow. We hope you gather the same or a better experience from the comfort of your home and office. Before I review the functionality of the webinar, I would like to bring to light that the company manufactures critical and differentiated precision engineered products with close tolerances. The longstanding relationships with esteemed organizations like ANP, CIL, ISRO, DRTO bears testimony to the company's niche capability and the same has been seen in the success and pride through many projects of national importance like the Mars Orbiter mission, Earth Observation Satellite and the Chandrayaan-2 mission. Additionally, the company has been focusing on indigenization and leading the way for Atma Nirbhata. Moving ahead, you will be kept on mute throughout the event and all questions will be answered via the Q&A chat box only, where you can type your question in session or at the end of the webinar. Would request all participants to please limit yourselves to three questions if possible and use a lowercase font when typing your question. If we miss answering any of your questions, don't worry. You can email us at IPO team at conceptpr.com and we will try to be swift in responding back to you. Going forward, it's a great, great pleasure to introduce the speakers of today. From the company, we have Mr. Parvat Srinivas Reddy. Managing Director and Promoter, Mr. Devesh Dhar Dwedi, Chief Operating Officer, Mr. Suditu Bhattacharya, the Chief Financial Officer. The representation of the bankers are Mr. Anuj Mittal, Director of Corporate Finance, JM Financial Limited, and Mr. Devendra Maudev, Vice President Investment Banking, IFL Securities Limited. On behalf of the company and the lead managers to the issue, let me thank all participants for being a part of this session. And I now invite Mr. Devendra Mahadev from IFL to deliver the opening remark and commence this Brokers and Analysts Conference. Hi everyone, thanks Lalit. A very good afternoon to everyone and thank you for joining us for the Analyst and Broker Meet of the IPO of MTR Technologies. It is our pleasure to host everyone today and on behalf of the management, we extend a very warm welcome. Let me start by introducing the panelists for today in some detail. From the management, we have Mr. Srinivas Reddy, Managing Director of MTR. He's an engineer with a master's degree from US and has over 29 years of experience in the field of precision engineering and has been at the helm of affairs at MTR. We also have with us Devesh, who's the CEO. He's an engineer from NIT and a management graduate from ISB. He leads operations for MTR. We also have with us Mr. Sudipto Bhattacharya. He's the CFO and a CA. Uh, from the banker's end, it's me, Devendra, and I also have my colleague Anuj from JM Financials. We are extremely excited in bringing such a high-quality company in the niche manufacturing sector to the Indian capital markets. The company's key strength lies in its engineering capabilities. This has enabled uh, them to offer complex uh, precision manufacturing components to their customers. The key words to note are precision as well as complex. We do not think that there is any other listed peer in India with the capabilities which MTR has to offer. This capability with their track record of timely delivery for their customers has earned them strong reputation and earned them customers like NPCIL, ISRO, DRDO, along with multinationals like Bloom Energy. To elaborate on the details of the IPO, uh, we recently in fact concluded, the management concluded a 100 crore pre-IPO with marquee investors. Uh, at an issue price of 540 rupees. The IPO is a book build issue. The price band is, uh, 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 has been decided uh, from 574 to 575. At the top end of the price band, the issue size will be around 597 crores with about 124 crores of fresh issue. The issue will open on the 3rd. The anchor will open on the 2nd. The issue will close on the 5th of March. We look forward to for your support to make this IPO grand success. And with this, I will uh, give back the proceedings to Lalit. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Mahadev, for the introduction of uh, 
Emtar Technologies initial public offering and the issues key highlights i would now request the moderator to please play a short corporate audio visual of the company MTAR has started its journey in the year 1970 It has evolved over the years as a leading precision engineering player catering to the manufacturing needs of national and global customers in strategic sectors such as nuclear space and defense and clean energy from a humble beginning we have now grown into seven units including a 100% export oriented unit catering to customers based out of Israel and United States of America among others our units are equipped with advanced cnc machines and all the other manufacturing facilities under one roof mtar is capable to provide one stop solution for major manufacturing and integration requirements we have in house micro to heavy precision machining specialized fabrication and welding capabilities vacuum brazing facilities assembly and testing heat treatment surface treatment and special processes such as painting we have extensive and stringent testing and quality control mechanisms with experience in formulating quality assurance plans and carrying out inspection full fledged facilities for all qc and qa activities such as 3d cmms laser measuring instrument etc and entity facilities such as radiography ultrasonic vibration testing facility dye penetrant we undertake identification and inspection at each stage of manufacturing mtar is in the process of establishing a new unit at adibatla This unit shall be catering to advanced sheet metal verticals. The company is also planning to construct an additional facility for specialized fabrication. Most of our manufacturing facilities are AS 9100D and ISO 9001-2015 certified. The company has also initiated the certification process for ISO 14001-2015. 27001 2018 and nat cap the product development process is complemented with r&d and workforce expertise to ensure maintenance of quality standards complex product manufacturing wide product portfolio long standing customer relationship state of the art facilities strong and diversified supplier base track record in financial growth and experienced and qualified management team are our key competitive strengths the av must have given you a crisp understanding of what the organization does but it cannot get better than hearing from the technocat management and the leadership i would now request mr parvat shrinivas reddy mr devesh dad Vedi and Mr. Sudip to Bhattacharya to take us through the organization's journey, struggles, and victories. Subsequently, take the attendees through the company's investor presentation to cover its business and financial details, as well as touch upon its key strategies going forward. Thank you, Lalit. Uh... and good afternoon ladies and gentlemen i'm sinwa sridhi here managing director of mtr technologies with me we have our chief operating officer mr devesh divedi uh, who is a mechanical engineer himself he worked in uh, the drdo earlier in the design section of the missiles division and also with the uh, bharat forge and finance operation strategy has been a great addition to a senior management team over the years we also have sripto bhattacharya uh, who is our cfo Uh, worked in companies like ACC, Lafraj, uh, Aldia Petrochemicals. Has 35 plus years of experience in finance and systems implementation. Has been a great addition to our senior management team as well. 
So let me move uh, now. Uh, move on to uh, the uh, presentation. Uh, see, MDR evolved over the years as uh, the leading precision engineering company. Hello. So MDR evolved over the years as a leading precision engineering company, uh, servicing strategic sectors like uh, space, defense, and nuclear. The company has 50 plus years of track, proven track record with the strategic sectors. The journey of MTI started way back in 1970. Uh, this is a, exactly when the sanctions were uh, imposed across the board and uh, the technology transfer never happened to this country at that point of time. So uh, the Department of Atomic Energy uh, approached HMT Hindustan Machine Tools to actually manufacture the coolant channels of the existing nuclear reactors, which were then imported from Canada. So looking at the criticality, HMT refused to take up that job because we're looking at tolerances, close tolerances of five to 10 microns with one micron being 0.001 mm. That's the kind of precision work that this company does. So then our late founders, uh, Mr. P. Ravindrati was heading the planning and design section in HMT and Mrs. K. S. N. Reddy heading the production in HMT. Both of them joined hands together and started a small workshop in Hyderabad in 1970 with just four machines. Subsequently, they executed this uh, tremendous job of executing the very critical job for DAE successfully. And the rest is history. Today, we have 400 plus machines uh, spread across seven manufacturing units, which were built brick by brick over the last 50 years. And with special facilities like heat treatment, surface uh, coatings, painting, etc., making MTR as one-stop show for all the customers, both in domestic as well as international customers for us. <clears throat> Over here, uh, the basic birth of MTR has happened because of the indigenization requirement in this country way back in 70s. And we continue to do so with our R&D division. And we have developed a number of uh, products for all these sectors, basically 14 products in nuclear, six in space and defense, and subsequently three in clean energy. Apart from this, we have developed a number of import substitutes for the nation, uh, specific to say the highlights being the ball screws, which are extensively used in nuclear space and defense, and also the water lubricated bearings, which are used in the nuclear reactors. Until such time, earlier before this, they were all being imported from uh, various uh, companies from abroad. And presently, we are also developing roller screws, which is again a 100% uh, import substitute, which is extensively used in the missiles program for the defense and as well as the launch vehicles uh, with ISRO. This we are expecting to, uh, we are very close to launching this roller screws uh, very shortly. <clears throat> the uh, entry barriers are very tough uh, in this particular niche area because the qualification criteria is also very stringent. Uh, we do have some uh, competition uh, in some overlapping areas with LNT and Godrich, and we feel this competition is very healthy. <clears throat> in terms of uh, MDR stands a much better chance in this competitive uh, segments uh, because we focus primarily on our core capabilities and uh, have being very cost effective in nature. Apart from this, MDR also manufact develops and manufactures its own machines for production. We are capable of even uh, manufacturing our own machines, which we have done in the areas of deep hole boring machine, boning machine, special purpose machines, thereby bringing the capex cost down drastically. And we continue to do so on a regular basis. We have a very strong engineering cell, which works with the R&D and supporting the planning and estimation uh, departments, and also reducing the cycle times for various volume creation jobs for both exports and imports, and also trying to indigenize various products and assemblies for the nation in different sectors uh, to avoid uh, the required imports as the guidelines given by our government of India uh, at this point of time. The company has received a number of awards over the years, uh, basically the areas of indigenization and quality are from highest levels of different organizations because of our deliverables in terms of performance and as well as quality that this company has maintained over the years. We also have a very good uh, training uh, uh, program where the young engineers who join the company are subjected to extensive training in various areas of engineering and enough challenges are thrown to them for them to develop as very good engineers for the company and for the nation. 
and uh, also the training program is done extensively across all levels right from senior management to middle management to adopt to the latest technologies that we try to uh, bring into the company as and when required just to mention we have uh, participated in all the launches of istro over the years but just to be specific on couple of them are being the uh, engine supply to PSLV C25 for the Mars Orbiter mission and also being the integral part of the JSLV uh, launch vehicle for the Chandrayaan-2. Further, we have uh, supplied complex assemblies for the Agni missile program for the defense organizations over the years. Now, moving on to the board of directors, uh, it's very clear that the uh, uh, we have uh, given highest importance for corporate governance uh, for the growth company like MTR. We have 10 directors uh, on the board and uh, six of them are independent directors, three promoter directors and one investor director. Each of the investor directors are from various walks of life in, from nuclear, space, defense, corporate and financial world. Mr. BVR Subhu is our chairman. Mr. Sriyak Matthew is our uh, investor director from the investor group. And we have Veda Chalam Nagarajan, who is a partner's free awardee for his immense contributions for the space programs over the years for our country. <clears throat> Let me quickly move on to the segmental opportunities that we have here in MTR. The first of the thing is nuclear. As I said earlier, we have been associated with nuclear over uh, right from day one, over 50, close to 50 years now. So basically here we have three uh, areas where we work with. One is the new reactors, two is the refurbishment of reactors, and three is the maintenance of reactors. As we are all aware, recently the first of the 700 megawatts reactor in Kakrapar was commissioned very successfully. This has been a major achievement uh, by NPCL and the corresponding uh, vendors uh, who participated in this. And MTR has supplied majority of the complex assemblies and products for this particular reactor, which was being commissioned for the first time. And this has led to what we call as a fleet reactors being announced by NPCL, for which two couple of reactors from Gorakhpur, the tenders are active right now, where MTR has also already received some orders and will continue to receive orders for these two new reactors. And also four more reactors, uh, the tenders will be floated in first uh, week of FI-22, first, first quarter of uh, FI-22. And the subsequent reactors will come in a batch, uh, in a phased manner, one year apart. So we expect a lot of orders flowing in from these new reactors, which have already been announced are in active stage right now. Tendering process is going on at this point of time. The second area is the refurbishment of reactors for which MTR is very well known of. Uh, if, you, if you remember, we started that coolant channel work way back in 1970s. So uh, based on the latest safety guidelines, all the existing 22 reactors that are operational, which are 220 megawatts, need to be refurbished after a certain life cycle. So MTR is involved in refurbishing of these reactors. And presently, we are refurbishing one of the reactors uh, in Kaiga at present. And this process will continue year-on-year -year basis uh, based on the refurbishment plan being released by the NPCL on a regular basis. Maintenance is something which MTR supplies all the critical products that we make exclusively for NPCL and also the assemblies for the operations of their existing reactors, what are in play right now. Let me move on to the space and defense quickly. We started supplying to ISRO way back in 1983 with uh, very complicated precision components for them. But by 1989, the first of the fully assembled rocket engine was rolled out from MTR. And we continue to supply these engines till date very successfully without any kind of blemish in terms of quality and performance. And which is being used in every of the launches that ISTO undertakes on a regular basis. The second development which we have done over the years has been the cryogenic engine, which is very prestigious, where we manufacture the main kit of the cryogenic engines, that is the booster pumps, uh, the turbo pumps, the gas generators and injector heads. And finally, they get integrated in ISTO. And we also supply some very critical walls for the satellites. Apart from this, over the last four years, we looked at how we need to improve our wallet share in the space program. So our R&D has worked on various products which are now being rolled out in FI-22. One such is the semi-cryo engine, fully assembled engine, which is going to be used in the GSLV launch vehicle to carry a payload of 6,000 kgs. 
just to explain to you in pslv we carry a payload of 1000 kg in gslv with this semi cryo engine we can carry a payload of 6000 kg and that's going to get rolled out in a 522 which will add a lot of revenues to this company second is the control modules for the launch vehicle which we have been working for the last 4 years we have done the development uh, then uh, prototypes and batch production completed and now we are in the volume mode which will commence from a 522 first quarter of a 522 the third area which we looked at which is a much wider scope of area is uh, establishing the sheet metal specialized sheet metal project near the airport to basically manufacture the thrust chambers motor casings and light alloy structures for the uh, launch vehicles for isro and this will be a major input from our side for the launch programs for indian space research organization so moving on to a defense uh, here Uh, we are basically involved in very niche areas uh, in defense as i said earlier we are involved in the agni missile program uh, which we have done extensively in various agni missiles program that we worked with and now we are working with the veda missile program where 80 to 85% of the job is done we will be done by mtr today and apart from this we are working on various metallic canisters wind kit assemblies actuators etc so as we are all aware uh, this is where our r&d comes into play based on the atmanirbhar which government announced uh, and also on the make in india concept based on you know uh, 101 items were banned uh, to be imported and also 108 systems and subsystems to be indigenized so the company is working on the r&d is working extensively on a fast track basis to see how soon we can indigenize various of these assemblies and products which government of india is actually importing at this point of time so as we all know mtr is there right from day one in terms of indigenization and uh, we are right there to take this forward in a big way to support our government and to indigenize all their products what we need for the, our nation to be very independent of uh, the rest of the countries uh, depending on the technologies coming from abroad apart from this uh, uh, finally i can move on to the clean energy this has been a, a big growth sector for us uh, in 2012 one of the mnc customers called bloom energy approached us to manufacture the solid fuel oxide units for them which is very complicated in terms of intrinsic raising technology vacuum raising technology and uh, complicated welding procedures combined with machining it took 3 and 1/2 uh, years for us to establish this and once we have done that from 18 units today we are at a level of 180 plus units and growing very aggressively in this particular line apart from this growth engine what we going very aggressively we also have couple of more products that we have developed one is the hydrogen units uh, which already the prototypes have been manufactured and we can expect a huge traction coming from this growth engine basically by end of fi 22 beginning of fi 23 and also in electrolyzers where we produce green hydrogen that's where the entire world is moving for and also it has been announced by our government of india in the last budget so we already built the prototypes for this and uh, it's under testing right now so we are way ahead in, in terms of clean energy working on that for the last 8 9 years and we'll be able to develop more and more products and also add number of more companies to become their oems to manufacture based on their technologies what they have at this point of time apart from this we are also working with andrix in hydro power projects and we are looking forward uh, in various other areas in clean energy that this can, company can contribute purely through its core capabilities that what we have developed over the years as far as other exports are concerned we are also exporting uh, very healthily to uh, leading defense companies in the world that is rafale and also elbit systems working on their drone hermes projects etc and we continue to do so and grow in this line as an independent vertical uh, for the years to come with this uh, i would like to conclude and would like to say that we are operating at gross profit margins of 65% across all sectors at an average with a very healthy order book of 1.7 times the revenue and with a very substantial uh, and very encouraging revenue growth for the years to come and with this i would hand over to devesh our ceo who take you quickly through the operations and our cfo will take you through the financials thank you uh thank you sir and good afternoon everybody 
It's a pleasure to take you through the operations. Uh, we have, uh, I'll give you a very brief summary about the operations and then get into the details on each of the slides. Uh, we have seven plants uh, in Hyderabad and 400 machines across these plants, of which 160 plus are CNC type. Uh, this makes results in a high level of automation on the machining side. We also have in-house surface treatment capabilities like nitriding, anodization, etc. We are working to make these NATCAP compliant. We have one of a kind assembly and integration facilities where there is a not, lot of implicit knowledge transfer over the last 50 years. And you know, because of the, which these facilities are one of a kind. Uh, we are also designing our own design for manufacture, you know, or we are writing our own manufacturing plans. <laughs> if there's any product, you know, we would study it and come up with a design for manufacture, uh, which is not provided by our customers. Because we do this, and we do it over our own available machinery, uh, we are able to carry out <coughs> effective utilization of our machines, which are high uh, capability general purpose machines across the business segments, sorry, across the customer segments. And uh, this kind of an infrastructure allows us to maintain efficient operations, uh, stringent process control, a high quality track record and improve the execution schedules. <coughs> Excuse me. We have highly trained manpower and the average experience of the MTR employee is 15 plus years. We have an engineering cell which backs up our process planning and estimation. It works on new product development and cycle time reduction. Uh, we are valued for our manufacturing process knowledge and our domain knowledge of inspection and assembly. We are also valued for getting it right the first time. In most inquiries or product lines, we are one of the limited set of two or more companies which are pre-qualified by the customers. Our senior management team, especially Mr. Srinivas, is keyed on to these customers. We retain a high level of personal touch and interaction with the customers, which is a legacy from our founder chairman, Mr. Uh, Ravindra Reddy. And due to this, the company enjoys high clarity on the upcoming projects and programs. Uh, now I'll cover a couple of, uh, uh, you know, some bullet points on e each of the slides. Uh, let's go into the case study on the uh, rocket engine. On the bottom left, you see the Vikas engine, which has uh, been around for 30 plus years. And this has been used on the PSLV missile uh, uh, rocket, as well as on the JSLV rocket. MTR has been supplying this for the 30 plus years. Uh, we have been, uh, we have a 100% safety and acceptance record for this engine. Every flight of ISRO has uh, components and systems going from MTR. The Vikas engine is a good example. Similarly, on the cryogenic engine, we supply this and this goes into the GSLV uh, in the upper stages. And here again, we have got a 100% acceptance and safety record. Uh, the third item is the semi-cryo engine. The semi-cryo engine is a game changer technology where it would reduce the large cost for ISRO in a big way and which we will supply in the next financial year onwards. In terms of manufacturing, this is a pretty complex items. Uh, there are about 15 plus manufacturing and assembly stages to each of these engines. And, uh, you know, uh, the criticality, you know, can only be imagined. Um, each of these engines, you know, uh, what we have supplied, they have got a 100% acceptance record. Now let's come to the FM head uh, on the bottom right. This is a critical equipment, 15 tons plus. And uh, this equipment is required on the side wall of a nuclear reactor to uh, one on each side. And it is required for loading and unloading of the nuclear fuel. Uh, it's required to be available 24 7, 365. Uh, MTR developed this 35 plus years ago with the Department of Atomic Energy. And we have got a large installed base of this over the 22 plus reactors across India. Uh, MTR uh, you know, has been doing this and uh, you know, it's very critical, 100% acceptance and safety record for this item as well. Um, and it's required to be available 24 7, 365. So, you know, the criticality uh, can only be imagined. So, let's go to the uh, next slide. We have got a 14 plus products on the nuclear side, uh, 6 plus on the space and the defense side, and 3 plus on the clean energy side. So, besides these products, we do a lot of uh, components and subsystems, which we do not call by the name of products. And this kind of, uh, you know, uh, production mix gives us a high play between value and volume and allows us to utilize our facilities efficiently. 
uh, we have got uh, a healthy mix of uh, production orders, which are about 85% and then 15% are first time orders, uh, which will give us hope for future volumes. Let's go into the next slide. MTR uh, has, is based out of Hyderabad, which is a defense manufacturing hub and close to major defense organizations. We are able to leverage this for getting access to high quality trained manpower, as well as uh, access or absorb high quality, uh, high uh, cutting edge technology, uh, which can be utilized profitably uh, for keeping the company on the cutting edge. Uh, we have also got state of the art machinery like seven axis mill turns and five axis VMCs which very few players in the country can boast of. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, this is a summary slide that of all that I have explained to you. Uh, besides this, the sheet metal and the uh, uh, fabrication uh, areas where the company is planning to expand, these are high value segments. These are, uh, you know, uh, what we are making is some very critical equipment or parts uh, where either the value uh, addition content is very high and also the quality uh, requirement is very high. Uh, for example, this is equivalent to making fuselages of, uh, you know, various uh, kinds of aircraft. So uh, with that, let's go to the next slide. Thank you. Coming to the supply chain aspect, we have the requirement to work across all kinds of metals and therefore have developed a large and a diversified global supplier base. We work with highly specialized steel like 17.4 pH and have to employ extremely stringent standards in our quality checks by selecting our vendors and carrying out insourcing. In the area of space and defense, most of the orders received are on free issue of materials basis. The material is given to us by our customers free of charge against a bank guarantee. And in such cases, our revenue only captures the value addition that we do. Now with this, I just like to articulate the strategy of the company. Uh, let's go to the strategy slides, please. So how we are planning to grow, uh, you know, going forward from here is we plan to capitalize on the large expected orders in the nuclear and the clean energy sector. We will be increasing our scale and scope by addition of capabilities in sheet metal and fabrication, leverage our large greenfield facilities at, uh, at Adi Butler of 9.5 acres and work on the import substitution. We will be keeping a tight control on the raw material costs and maintain the efficiency of production on the shop floor. We will also maintain a high focus on our manufacturing capabilities, identify and remove bottlenecks to address any capacity issues and address any manufacturing constraints by aggressively uh, removing the uh, bottleneck, adding capex or using technology as required. Uh, we plan to expand our customer base, especially in the clean energy, which might further drive our export growth. We also plan to further increase our product portfolio within Bloom Energy with hydrogen based equipment like electrolyzers and sheet metal components. So with this, I will conclude and request Sudhito to take over on the financials. Thank you, Devesh. Okay. I would now quickly take you through some of the results of this wonderful business that was presented to you by Srinivas and Devesh. <coughs> Uh, the past financials in some detail are already provided in slide numbers 31 to 34, which you may kindly refer to. Our order book has been growing steadily at about 30% CAGR over the last three years. Our current pending order book is about one and a half times that of our estimated revenue for the current year. This gives a strong visibility of growth going forward. MTR has enjoyed significant growth in revenue over the past three years at 16% CAGR. We expect to close this year upwards of 250 crores, continuing the growth trend. We had lost about two months of operations due to COVID-related disruptions. However, in spite of the COVID-related disruptions and the loss of <coughs> operations, the MTR team has been able to uh, deliver strong revenue growth in the first half of uh, financial year 2021, along with maintaining margins. The gross margin level of the company has been consistently high at 65% due to our presence in the high margin niche sector as explained by Srinivas. MTS EBITDA has effectively doubled from 33 crores to 63 crores between FI18 and FI20. Our EBITDA margins have also been growing and with the current capacity being around uh, capacity utilization being around 50%, we expect our margins to improve further 
in the next couple of years as and emerging economies of scale uh, next slide thank you the strong EBITDA, growth in ebitda has been coupled with strong operating cash flows which is driven by our focus both on improving operating margins as well as working capital cycle in fy 20 the operating cash flow was uh, about 56 crores and when this is compared with our the ebitda for the comparable period of 63 crores it indicates a healthy operating model and good liquidity in business however in the first half of uh, uh, financial year 21 our cash flows got affected and it, which is an aberration mainly resulted from the disruptions related to covid the company is steadily coming out of those with the effects of those disruptions and effect to have sustained cash flow generation as we enter the next phase of high growth at 40% plus revenue over the next 2 years the company has been able to maintain very good liquidity in spite of having paid three dividends having uh, carried out the buyback of share and having invested about 45 crores of uh, 45 crores in capex over the last 3 years out of their in, out of internal accruals we have maintained the strong balance sheet discipline and are almost debt free in spite of growing at a fast pace our roc is also growing we have delivered around 20% roc in fy20 we expect the return ratios to improve further as we sweat our assets better i now hand you over to shrinivas for his closing comments thank you thank you uh, devesh and thank you sudipto and thank you uh, thanks a lot for uh, patient hearing here and i would like to thank uh, jm and ifil uh, at the same time uh, and uh, now we can move on to the q and a session thank you thank you mr reddy mr dwedi mr bhattacharya for taking us uh, through the presentation and uh, of course the three plus decade experience in nuclear space and defense and almost a decades involvement in you know clean energy sector shows promise we hope the attendees have captured enough and more understanding of emta's business model its financial soundness and differentiated product portfolio for the floor is open for participants to ask questions i would like to reiterate to type your name and organization details in the q and a chat box for the moderator to take note and address your query note in the interest of time we will be restricting it to 20 to 25 questions only a repetitive questions will be skipped okay sir uh, a question has come in with respect to you know the order book you know given the current uh, order book being 336.19 crore uh, could you give some more light on it in terms of you know uh, the orders further going forward and you know what is the trajectory going to be yeah see basically the present order book at 350 60 crores uh, is something which uh, we do have a very strong order book and uh, obviously the kind of opportunities uh, that we have uh, mentioned in the, in terms of nuclear space with additional wallet share and also in uh, defense in indigenization programs that we are taking forward and in also in clean energy the way we are looking forward to the various products that we have launched recently we have fire, we would Uh, and we would see a very strong order book going forward uh, and we are receiving uh, substantial orders even in q4 and we would have a healthy order book going <coughs> by end of this year and going forward also okay so your total income and restated profit has grown at a kgr of 16.56 and 140.31% between fy18 and fy20 do you see this uh, trajectory continuing So, if you want to answer that, please. Ah, can you repeat the question once more, please? So, the question states that your total income and restated profit has grown at a kgr of sixteen point five six and one forty point three one percent between FI eighteen and FI twenty. Mm-hmm. Do you see this trajectory continuing? Ah, uh, we see this trajectory continued. Actually, yeah, uh, you know, as I mentioned in my, uh, also we expect at least the next two years revenue to uh, grow at around forty percent. and uh, annually and uh, we would uh, maintain the ebit levels the way it is today maybe improve a little bit okay so while uh, while the document states that there is uh, no listed peer when it comes to comparison uh, would you compare yourselves with indirectly 
we would not like to compare ourselves with anybody we do understand as actually our investment bankers they also struggle to compare see any peers available in the market but we try to compete within ourselves to deliver better and better products uh, for the nation and for the international world uh, that's what we are today and we continue to do that as i said in certain se- certain area certain uh, overlapping segments we do have godrej and lnt as our competitors okay pa uh, could you throw some light on uh, you know uh, the share of ntr technology in their in, in terms of their products and uh, better day details well there is nothing particularly like a share see for example in nuclear as i've said we have developed various uh, products uh, for the nuclear segment over the years so we cater to the addressable market share for nuclear is almost 400 crores per new reactor is what we can address each time and similarly for a refurbishment reactor it is close to about 90 crores so this is when i speak about uh, six of the reactors under active tendering two of them now and four in the first quarter that itself would indicate the kind of share that mtr can garner out of these uh, new opportunities uh, that we have right now in space obviously we cater in the niche area of supplying rocket engines and cryogenic engines and as i said earlier the semi cryo engine is going to get rolled out the control modules so our share percentage share in a psl we launch vehicle would uh, probably go from 13 to 14% to close to about 18 to 20% and when it comes to clean energy obviously we are in a very good shape there dealing with uh, strong uh, partnership with uh, mnc company like bloom and also we're working with other mnc companies now in the clean energy sector so this is galloping actually and going to grow even further especially when the whole world is looking for the hydrogen economy and that's where we are ahead of the game here and we expect a lot of traction coming out of these areas so your trade receivable is about 110 to 114 days in december 31st 2020 it stood at approximately 73 crores uh you know from the receivable point of view when do you expect you know the money is to come in and uh, which business is there any particular business segment this is due from see as a, you know i would like to clarify this very clearly see all organizations that work with are all autonomous bodies where the budgets are sanctioned way ahead of time by government of india and with all these sectors we never faced any issues till date the maximum trade receivable date Uh, dates are about 30 to 35 days and in the case of exports it's uh, averages between 90 to 105 days okay so what is the current debt level of the organization sudipta so is it roughly around 60 crores uh, which one the current debt level right now as of today no current debt level is about 100 crores plus no the debt level they're talking about the working capital and ha uh, the... ah, so that's what i'm saying the trade debts are about about no no they're talking about the debt uh, level number of days no 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 the debt they're talking about the debt the loans the bank loans the bank loans no no the uh, oh the bank loans the bank loans are about uh, today it will be about 70 crores approximately 65 to 70 crores okay uh, from a r&d perspective you know uh, year on year what have been your expenses Now we average basically around four to five crores year on year, and we expense it out. Sometimes it is four, sometimes it is even six crores, but we average around five crores, and that has given us excellent results over the years in terms of developing new products, uh, which generates a lot of revenues for this company. And that's what we have done uh, very aggressively, especially over the last seven to eight years, and we continue to do so. And that's what we do right now. so there's a question which asks that if mnc companies like spacex try to enter the indian uh, market will it impact your revenue in space related uh, products that's never going to happen see uh, uh, basically you look at the uh, the cost of the launches from india are the lowest in the world so that's never going to happen and uh, we have a uh, lot of international companies approaching isro itself to launch their satellites and with privatization round the corner i would expect this to be uh, in more uh, uh, foundations uh, in more stronger than before so i don't see any kind of competition from a company like spacex launching satellites from india that's not going to happen so particular to the nuclear sector is entar the only company currently working with the government 
No, as I said, we have LNT Godrej as our main competitors in nuclear in different overlapping segments. We do have them there. Okay, so from uh, the uh, prospects from Bloom Energy, there is a question which states that we understand Bloom Energy product is environmental friendly, uses CH4. So, what is the footprint in CO2 emission and uh, what is the power price uh, per WT and what is the grid price in USA? What kind of growth do you see in the Bloom Energy product? What is the consistency in order from ISRO and defense? And what is the market size uh, uh, which you, you, know, you can grow to? See, let me start off with uh, the clean energy. In the solid fuel oxide uh, uh, area, Bloom has got the maximum sales close to, uh, I think, 900 million to billion dollars right now. Now, how this has happened is over the last seven, eight years, that's where we come in. As, a, as I said, we are like partners in terms of manufacturing their designs. Is we have The cost reductions have happened over the years in terms of design changes from their side, where a lot of input costs have come down. And that's a continuous uh, process. And today, uh, in the United States, uh, they are competing with 12 states uh, in uh, with the grid right now. They're much cheaper than the grid power. And to what knowledge I have or information I have, by end of this year, they would capture another 14 additional states where they become a lot more competitive than the grid power. So what it says very clearly is that over the years, uh, it, it has evolved as the most uh, cost-effective way of producing power and that too in a clean manner. So that is what is most important. And uh, that's where we stand right now. And we we gain a lot based on the growth of Bloom in US. And also they have launched their product in South Korea in a big way, which has been accepted very well. They have tie up with SK Group and they're doing extremely well in South Korea as well. So we, we look forward for a lot more momentum coming from even from South Korea as well. When it comes to defense and space, as I said, we'll have about 32 launches over the next two years. As announced, it's available uh, uh, very openly in the website and with three special launches. Uh, so that's what we're looking at, where we participate in all the launches. And also, apart from that, I have said clearly that we have increased our wallet share with space with our new products being rolled out in FI22. So we see a, a substantial growth coming from the space program because of our additional products being rolled out. And defense is very clear that we get involved in only niche areas uh, where uh, uh, we are known for it. We have participated in a number of uh, very critical areas for the defense program for government of India. We continue to do that. And in fact, we are also exporting in huge numbers uh, assemblies and products to Rafael and Elbit Systems, the leading defense companies in the world in Israel, where the technology is way advanced. So we are able to capable to even supplying to them. And they've appreciated our efforts over the last two, three years, and we continue to do that. So what has been the net impact of uh, COVID on the organization? Could you throw some light on that? Yes, we did have an impact in the first half of the year, as the CFO has clearly mentioned in his presentation. But uh, what has really happened is we had two months of lockdown, but uh, I would really uh, appreciate the entire senior management team, the engineers, and the workforce to come together and catch up on the lost time and we have successfully done that. And uh, today, we can proudly say that we're able to achieve the numbers, what we promised to our board of directors at the beginning of the year, much before COVID. And we are right on track with that. And uh, I would really appreciate the entire team to basically achieve what they have done till date. So uh, with respect to the postponement of projects, of course, because of aberrations like, you know, COVID coming in, you know, the kind of cost overruns that come into the picture, do you have provisions for these? We never had that kind of a situation at all. Uh, the reason being, what all we had a very strong order book that we should not forget. So we were executing the orders what we had, and we also were getting the free issue material uh, from the departments like space. They issue give us free issue material, and the raw material is not in our uh, country. Uh, is not we don't purchase the raw material. So we had enough support from the organizations. We had a strong order book for which we could have we executed what we had on hand. So we didn't technically have any such issues. Whatever orders for the future were supposed to be released during the first half, all such orders are getting released during the second half of the year, which are for the future year. So that's why I said our order book would grow over the next four to six months, even much stronger than what number we are showing there. 
sir so, uh, it is understood that you know you are eligible and currently enjoying a reduced tax rate you know will that continue in the future uh sirip do you want to answer that please yeah so talk yeah, uh, we are enjoying a reduced tax rate which is uh, where the threshold limit for turnover is about 400 crores so we expect to cross that uh, let us say in, uh, in 23 definitely if not earlier uh however we are seriously we have we have been we have not been going to the lower uh, tax regime uh, which is uh, which is on offer because we had certain uh, tax benefits which we wanted to complete so in all probability in the next year we will go for the lower tax regime which also in, uh, requires that we do not make certain claims uh, for exemption and deductions uh in which case my tax rate effectively will become about 25% from uh, from uh, you know the current mix of uh, development versus volume based production mm-hmm. you know will that uh, continue to stay in the in the coming times too i understand but sir yes. you are this person to tell you yeah see the development activity is a continuous process in mtr and volume based is something which obviously we we will be going for but we will never forget as i said very clearly our rnd continuously works on developmental activities for indigenization of products which will eventually lead to that kind of volume production or the growth for the company so both go hand in hand and that's why we have a strong rnd division with a team of engineers working on it on a regular basis and that's been our strength over the years so let's not forget that this company was built over 50 years brick by brick and we continue to do that very sincerely to you know indigenize as many products as possible for the nation and for the benefit of the customers so there is a question which asks that you know in case there is a shift uh, you know to move uh, from you know from the cost effectiveness point of view to semi cryo engines will it lead in any kind of revenue dec- decline for and what is the percentage uh, what percentage is the current revenue comp- contribution of cryo engines see semi cryo engine uh, is roughly they which is around 5 crores right is much yes, more sir. than what we are doing today yes sir you are so right revenues will actually double right so that's yes. what sir i'll uh, come in here see the semi cryo engine is basically you know designed for a particular type of gslv you know uh, rocket when you are having the launch uh, you know wait the the weight of the payload you know going above five six tons that is where it really kicks in and the existing technology you know the cryogenic uh, you know it is not a situation where one will replace the other it is that there are different kind of missions for which the semi cryo will come in and you know obviously being cost effective the overall you know launch economics will be affected positively you had mentioned about uh, spacex coming in and trying to take away isro's market well isro is not sitting quiet you know they are doing it and we are helping them so that's how it works so from from the segments perspective you know there is a question which states that you know you've got a 93 crore nuclear order book uh, uh, you know and uh, you know 80 crores in clean energy you know yeah. when are these uh, you know projects in terms of execution how many months is it going to take for you to complete uh go ahead sir yeah so basically these are all uh, uh, taking a year or year and a half at the maximum not beyond that like for example space we have 173 crores of order book but as i said we will be getting we are getting lot more orders in q4 going even up to q1 of uh, fi22 because the first 3 to 4 months uh, most of the organizations were under shutdown especially in mumbai then pcl then space in trivandrum so but fortunately we had strong order book which we could cater to for the current year even for the next year so as i said as the cfo said we have an order book at the rate of 1.7 times the revenues what we are projecting so we are in a very comfortable space out there yeah, i think so can you, you also throw some light on the margins if, if you can't give specific numbers could you you know say from the segment perspective which uh, segment gives you the maximum you know revenues as on date margin wise no more or less we do the same but for space probably 3 to 4% slightly higher that's about it because we have free issue material coming in from the organizations there so other than that we 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 operate at uh, more or less the average uh, margin which we mentioned so there's a question which asked that you know why is your working capital cycle you know at 6 months which is you know higher than any other typical 
capital goods company uh, which is close to about 3 to 4 months also an inventory of 3 months uh, seems high could you please uh, you know comment on that so dipto you want to take okay see uh, we are not typical capital goods company as you saw a large portion of our orders are developmental orders which take time so and so therefore we carry uh, heavy inventory for those as far as the exports are concerned uh, you know there is about 100 110 days of trade debtors because the term is 45 days after it reaches the plant of bloom which is approximately 100 110 days today so these are circumstances which are contracted circumstances we can't help it but we are trying our best to reduce the cycles and also our margins are good enough to handle such uh, working capital heavy contracts okay so from the contracts point of view you know there's a question which asked that you know uh, your uh, your contracts are short term in nature but you know uh, i mean you have had associations with your clients for a for a fairly long time so uh, is this uh, you know is this uh, you know uh, order based or is it for a specific period no it's basically order based everything is order based uh basically uh we have the contract signed or orders given to us for specific requirements <coughs> like for example rocket engines they give an order for uh, 12 to 14 engines at one time uh, which we need to deliver so that's what happens so everything is order based so in addition to the capex that you're doing at adi batla uh you're going to uh, also you're also looking to set up a separate sheet metal facility you know is that going to be specific to some customer or uh, you know is it for all your customers so uh, see as i said earlier the sheet metal if you look at it which we all discussed internally our senior management team first thing is uh, uh, as i said for the isro for the launch vehicles where we do the thrust chambers uh, motor casings light alloy structures but another area what we are looking at even for exports uh, is uh, which we have for the existing customers itself like for example bloom has a spend of uh, roughly uh, uh, 35 million dollars in sheet metal so we are looking at uh, working with bloom in covering uh, increasing our wallet share with them in the area of sheet metal itself now as and when the units go up the requirement of sheet metal also goes up so even if we get 40% of that share we are pretty much there to even begin with then obviously we are going to work with various other organizations mncs in this particular area which is a niche area in aerospace that's what we are looking for at this point of time so there's a question which asks that uh, uh, how many reactors as on date do we do you know maintenance for we do for all the reactors as i said 22 operational reactors we do for all of them we get requirements from every reactor and that's what we do as when the reactors go up then the additional revenues come in for maintenance from them also uh there's a question which asks how is the 45 crore capex uh, allocated uh, vertical wise uh, that you've incurred uh, how is the capa- capacity utilization for the same devesh you want to answer that yes sir that See, question is not very clear you should ask um, with more clarity um i guess you are asking about what has happened in the past 3 years 45 crore am i am i right correct sir okay see the 45 uh, crores uh, may, uh, you know one major item was uh, we had set up the aerospace machining facility as part of our export oriented unit uh, you know that is where a significant chunk about you know 17 to 20 crores approximately money went in now that business is yielding significant uh, you know revenues for us and it is a stepping stone to much fu- uh, better future growth so that was entirely new and you know it required to be invested because you know that capability didn't earlier exist in the company our capacity utilization has been generally about you know 45 50% and the rest of the capex is basically you know about 10 crores of it has gone towards uh, you know uh, uh, not not about about 5 crores of it has gone towards roller screws another 5 uh, uh, crores is going into roller screws we have also set up the adi batla you know uh, shed uh, and uh, carried out civil construction so you know those are the major areas where the 45 crores has been invested 
plus we have bought you know a few surplus machines like you know about 5 6 crores of of machines have also been purchased for the other businesses so uh, you know this basically tells you that most of the investment has been for either a new business area or towards adivatla which is a greenfield project there is a question which asks that how much percentage of revenue generally comes in the q4 set in in the q4 yeah yeah say about uh, you know 28 to 30% Okay. A question also asked that you know, besides uh, being involved in the Agni missile program, is there any other uh, you know uh, missile program that you know do we cater to? We are working you know for another project uh, you know uh, uh, called the Veda missile program, uh, which is a super uh, set of Agni missile. Uh, we are also working for the LRSAM uh, where we are making containers, and we are trying to bid on making equipment or LRUs. or tactical missile programs where there are large volumes so what is the total addressable market for uh, you know for the us you know when it comes to the electrolyzer segment so oh, there there's nothing like uh, see electrolyzers is a new product which is coming out right now primarily for the generation of green hydro- hydrogen which is called green because of the zero carbon emission so there is a huge market if you look at south korea for example they have a requirement of 15000 megawatts to be generated through hydrogen by uh, 2040 so there is such a huge space in a small country like south korea let alone the other countries so we are so there is a lot of scope uh, which we are looking at in a big way in the electrolyzers and hydrogen units at this point of time so your operating model is it uh, cost plus in nature no it's not cost plus in nature absolutely not Okay, what are the your uh, risk with regards to raw material prices increase? Maybe uh, you want to answer that. Sure, sir. See, okay, uh, there are parts of the business. Firstly, where we get compensated by the customer for price, uh, you know, for the cost escalation. So the nuclear side of the business works that way. That if we have got a contract, you know, which is generally over more than a period of a one year, and which most of the nuclear contracts, you know, on the paper are that way. uh you get a price escalation which is related to the cpi and the cpi has components of raw material pricing in it uh coming to you know the other uh, uh, areas in the case of space and defense it's mostly free issue of materials so there is not too much impact uh in the cases where there is a price escalation for example in the case of bloom let's say we have got price escalation uh you know we basically sorry we do not have price escalation but uh if there is a cost inflation uh, the fact is that we kind of are able to mitigate it away because we get annual forecast of the volume from the customers and therefore we lock in our purchase orders with the suppliers consequently and take forward deliveries so therefore the price gets locked in and uh, you know uh, fluctuations in the middle of the year do not affect us so our price is considering the price at the point of time of bidding so we are in some sense insulated from this problem so the question which asked that you know what is the average time cycle from uh, bidding to execution and delivery uh this is different by different uh, customer segments uh you, for example in the case of space as mr shirva said you would get a order for you know 12 engines and there is a delivery schedule so the delivery schedule is decided by the customer and you know therefore you know the concept of you know order to delivery actually doesn't exist uh coming to the nuclear side you know an average uh, order execution period is about 1.3 to 1.5 years probably about 1.3 because we are trying to accelerate the business there and in the case of bloom again you know you would get uh, orders uh, you have to execute it against a certain schedule of delivery the conversion time is about 45 days to 2 months okay sir and uh, could you also throw some light on you know the domestic and export uh, mix that you have and uh, you know how has it changed you know is it going to continue to stay the same from your uh, multiple segments so we are working at around uh, so basically 50% export and 50% domestic 
and we are looking at a good growth happening in domestic as well but in exports uh, especially in clean energy area where we are looking at lot more customers in future uh, would improve drastically so the overall mix uh, is to show that having export and domestic at equal percentages but uh, in clean energy if there is a real uh, push on the revenues then probably it can exceed by another 5 to 10 percent there but it would be more or less the important thing here is even the domestic growth engines are doing very well right now and will continue to grow in that area also but clean energy sector might grow even much faster in the nuclear segment do we have uh, some sort of conting contingent liability or indemnity insurance you know, as we play a critical work you know, of uh, reactor maintenance you know we don't have any liabilities there what we give is for our products we give a one year performance guarantee for our products and over the last 50 years there's not a single bank guarantee whatever whichever way bank guarantee has been encashed uh, till today by any department with this company and that's been a, a marvelous record that we have made it till date okay sir let's just wait for a few more questions to come in So the last question being uh, on uh, valuation, there's a question which states that uh, you know about ten days back, you know there was a pre-IPO that was done at five forty rupees. You know why is there a you know thirty rupee difference? The I suppose the bankers could take that question. Right, I think so. Uh, uh, with respect to valuation, we can only guide towards uh, if you refer the RHP, you will uh, be able to uh, see the nine month uh, reported EPS. and uh, that that if you analyze uh, that will give you a valuation of around 40 times uh, on trailing numbers uh, that we are targeting towards uh, in the price band and these are the kind of valuations that we are seeing uh, uh, leading investors anchor investors also uh, support and and that's really the only guidance that we can provide thank you sir i mean uh, we'll come to the end of the q and a session here in case there are any uh, answers uh, you know which are pending we will uh, respond back to the individual separately in written uh, thank you everyone for showing interest in knowing more about the company and its leadership and its future potential i would now now like to call upon uh, mr anuj mitra to please make the closing speech before we end today's webinar thanks thanks lalit uh so on on behalf of the uh, book running lead managers i would like to thank mr uh, uh, parvat shrinivas reddy uh, and his team for their valuable insights uh, uh, into the mtr technologies and its ipo to recap mtr technologies is a distinct uh, primary market opportunity as it manufactures high precision indigenous components subsystems assemblies uh, having components with low stress tolerances to serve projects of high national importance strategic sectors uh, which are uh, nuclear space and defense and clean energy uh, the company has a proven track record of long standing relationships with customers with 16 plus years of relationship with the likes of ncil 30 plus years with isro 40 plus years with drdo founded in 1970 as a partnership firm the company has originally was originally promoted by late p ravindra reddy late k satyanarayan reddy and p jayaprakash reddy it is currently being led by the managing director and promoter parvat shrinivas reddy uh, to recap the details of the current issue are as follows issue opens wednesday march 3rd 2021 issue closes march 5th friday uh the price band is rupees 574 to 575 per share uh, issue size is uh, rupees 595 to 596 crores the investor uh, categories are as follows uh, qiv portion not more than 50% of the issue size anchor in an anchor investor portion up to 60% of the qiv portion non institutional uh, portion not less than 15% of the net offer to public a retail portion not less than 35% of the net of the public we look forward to your support to make this ipo grand success thank you once again thank you mr mithal esteemed audience we've now come to the end of the webinar we look forward to your participation and 
support on making this initial public offering a great success. Wishing you all a great day and keep safe.